be here today. And I really thank Mr. Rupert and all the rest of the members of the management. We're here to share our knowledge with you and share our energies. And it is such a wonderful thing to see that some people are creating a universal brotherhood, which is very rare in this world to see today. And it is only possible through means of spirituality. I travel all around the world and we get to know many forms of spirituality all over the world. There are many forms of spirituality. Religious spirituality, divine spirituality, and non-religious spirituality, and atheist spirituality. People have derived their own meaning, their own understanding of spirituality. However, we do not go into differences, we do not disagree to any philosophy which is based on spirituality. We simply share our knowledge and our energies. The spirituality that we practice is the core of spirituality upon which the religion of Adam is based, upon which the religion of great prophet Abraham is based. This spirituality is found in the scriptures of high universal teachers like Adam, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Prophet Muhammad. We believe and we understand that spirituality is to do with the awakening of the souls and enlightenment of the souls. And the ultimate source of spirituality from where we are supposed to receive the benevolence is God. So the concept of spirituality that we practice is based on believing in God. It's non-religious. We have people from different walks of life. We have people from different religions. And uh, this is kind of a spiritual brotherhood. Uh, almost the same principle as your organization practice. However, our spirituality is like a practice in which we awaken the souls. And this awakening comes from uh, Lord Raja's Varshai. We do not say the only source is Gohar Shai. There are many great spiritual leaders in the world. And we can be in contact with extraterrestrial uh, sources as well, like Moses, like Abraham, like Jesus, like Prophet Muhammad. The thing is, are these individuals, dignitaries, approachable today? accessible today. And once we believe our souls are enlightened and our life is spiritualized and our souls are energized, we gain that access to the spiritual realm. We've been spreading this message of love to all humanity, people of all religions, and 
we do not discriminate. And we understand that unification and uniformity of all assorted people who come from different uh, cultural, religious and spiritual backgrounds. We'll have to have a bond and that bond has to be really profound. Like Milali said, according to the Chinese proverb, talks do not go rice. For us, in order to form a great universal brotherhood, we need to have a bond which can tie everybody into a fold. We speak different languages, we come from different uh, ethnicity, ethnicity, and we come from different religious backgrounds. Something has to be really solid, something has to be really extraordinary, something really strong that can bind all these assorted people into uh, one greater fold of brotherhood. And we understand that bond is the bond of spiritual love. When the hearts are enlightened and we begin to share the same type of energy in all hearts, then unification will come. When all the hearts are binding into each other with the same type of energy, with the same type of a spiritual path, that will be the beginning of the real brotherhood. This is our concept, which, which means we do not disagree, because there are many philosophies in this world, and many ways, many dimensions. And we're open to receiving more uh, knowledge on spirituality, whether it comes from uh, Judaism, whether it comes from Hinduism, whether it comes from Sufism, we're open to all. That's all I would like to say today. And if there are things that, that need to be cleared or any questions, I would like you to please ask any questions.
Could you elaborate a little bit on what is it then that each individual person has to do? Because living in the Western world, having been raised in the Western world, to me, I was brought up in separation. I would see people as different than me. And everything different was scary, was frightening. I had to judge it. I had to be careful of it. So I lived a big part of my life in fear. And I think maybe other people can relate to that. So I came for me to conclude that there is something I have to do within myself to be actually able to hear or see whatever message is coming and then to discern also not just to become a blind follower because we have that enough and it really didn't help humanity very much in my opinion please give us some guidance as to what every individual what can i do to really recognize that which unites versus have my little mind tell me oh my god i don't know you're better not listen you know what i'm trying to get at yeah. thank you One important thing in a spirituality, I will answer a question during the course of my answer. One important thing in a spirituality is to understand what is a spirituality. And in order to understand what is a spirituality, we must begin with ourselves. There are two dimensions of a human being, inner man and outer man. Outer man is referred to the body, the physical body. And inner man is the soul. When God created all the souls, all the souls were assembled before God. And when all the souls were assembled before God, God showed them the luxuries of this world. And it was said unto the souls, whoever wishes to get these luxuries of the world, they may go and get it. A magnitude of souls leapt towards it. And it was then said to the angels, write this choice as their fate. And then it was written in the book of their fate. And following that, God showed the souls the luxuries of paradise. And then it was said, those who want the luxuries of paradise, they should go and get it. A large number of souls leapt towards the luxuries of paradise. And this became their faith. Now there was, there was another group of people, of souls, who were looking at both sides, the luxuries of the world and the luxuries of the paradise. And they were undecisive. They were not convinced which way to go. So their option, their choice was suspended. Now it is the soul who should have the desire to love, the desire to be unified with God. Some of those, those souls did not move an inch from God. They stood there. They didn't want to see anything. They're the predestined souls, God-loving souls. And among from those souls, messengers and prophets and saints were sent. Our souls did not have the body. A soul is sent and the body is created in the womb of a mother. And this is how we become a human being. Our problem is that when we choose to practice spirituality, we're doing it by our body. And with that practice of spirituality, our spirits are not enlightened. Our, our spirits are not awakened. Like we have eyes of our body, in a similar way we have inner eyes. Like ears, we have spiritual ears as well. 
What we must do today is that we must awaken our souls and get connected with God. When the soul is connected to God, that is our destination. And as soon as we are connected to God, then our inner eye will begin to see what our physical eye cannot see. When our inner ears are activated, then they will hear the voice of God, then they will hear the voice of angels, they will hear everything what our physical ears cannot hear. Every day and every night, God speaks. He speaks to angels. And He says, Is there anybody in this world who want to love me? Is there anybody in this world who want my blessings? But the problem is, our inner ears cannot hear that ethereal voice of God. What we must do is to awaken the power of hearing, the spiritual hearing. What we must do to activate our inner eye and that will automatically happen when our soul is enlightened, when our soul is spiritualized. In order to sustain life in our body, we consume food every day. In a similar way, we need spiritual nourishment for the soul as well. You see, the problem is, the soul needs spiritual nourishment and we do not know how to feed our souls. In the temples, in the mosque and the churches, we call upon the name of God, but we are doing it by our word of mouth. And that practice, that ritual, does not enter the spiritual heart. It does not enter the soul. We need to find a way through which we are able to give that spiritual nourishment, to give that spiritual sustenance to the soul. And the one who can actually open the mouth of the soul and awaken the soul is a perfect spiritual teacher. That's what we need today. Messiah Foundation International is spreading this message and giving assistance to people that if they call upon His Holiness Lord Raya's Gaurashayi, they will find a spiritual teacher. And the services of His Holiness Gaurashayi are without making any commitment, without embracing any religion. It's non-religious uh, commitment, without a commitment. When that soul is enlightened, then we will have the inner eye, then we will have the inner ears. <coughs> and when you're connected to God, you will have that spiritual content. And all those people in this world who are connected to God, they will begin to recognize you. They will begin to uh, understand that you are one of those people who are connected to God. And by virtue of this, by the same token, as many souls are connected to God, it will be forming a great universal order where people will recognize the presence of God in each other's heart in each other's presence. So we need that inner eye, we need that inner tongue. Here in this world, we call upon God, but God doesn't listen to this voice because God is spiritual. We need a tongue which can speak the language of God. And that tongue is the tongue of the soul. When the soul is enlightened, all the spiritual faculties, all the spiritual departments of the soul will be activated and we will be in touch with God. We feel uneasy today. We do not have peace in this world today. We have everything. People have money, people have all the luxuries of life. 
People have temples and churches and mosques and all these scriptures. But even that we feel uneasy in our souls because the soul, the destination of the soul is God. The soul will feel contented only when the soul is connected to God and is able to speak with God. It is able to see God, the manifestation of God. I hope I answered your question. And even though most of them did it for the wrong reason, because they were afraid of punishment in hell, and they wanted some reward in heaven. Why oh, see my revered Monsignor Bishop Maring? We know each other. <laughs> so um, a very humble question is how these these authentic people that I look around here and that I know some of them, how people who really, really want to connect with God, speak the language of God, really acknowledge and recognize the divinity in each and every soul. What would you think is the need of the hour for those of us, all of us here, I think, probably, that really do want to commit to the spiritual path and want to live authentic lives and do not want to get far from God. And uh, maybe this word is a Western word, maybe it does not express too much, but I see that there is a theistic, I would call theistic, in Spanish, theista, a very theistic approach of the words, like uh, God, you know, Theos is God. So I do love that, having this, uh, great love for God in whatever, under whatever name or form, whether Ishwara, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, you know everything. So, and then at the same time, we have these messengers, right? You know, Buddha, Jesus, Lord Jesus, uh, Matsya, Kuma, Kalki Avatar. So, why would be uh, the role for us to really play, how should we behave, how should we act. And I remember some uh, words that are attributed to Master Jesus when he said, then give to Caesar that which is Caesar's and give God that which is God's. So we would love to give the avatar their place and at the same time we want to give God the place that God deserves in our hearts. So please, if you could elaborate a little more so that we have, uh, can have a clear picture and try to be better each day. Thank you very much.
I would like to talk about the uh, religions and the reason why people today have distanced themselves from the practice of religions. Some people say religions are evil. Some others say religions are important. But I understand that religions, when they were founded, when they were established, they were established by great universal teachers. And I do not see anything wrong with religions. All the religions are good. The religion of Adam, the religion of Prophet Abraham, the father of prophets, and the religion established by Lord Jesus Christ, and the religion of Islam established by Prophet Muhammad. They're all beautiful religions. However, there was a time upon every religion after which the religion stopped benefiting people. And that time was when people shunned the practice of spirituality which was attached to their religion. You see, we have, we have problems these days, especially from um, some people who call themselves Muslims. And there are 73 different denominations in this, within Islam. Some people continue to say Islam is the religion of peace, Islam does not propagate terrorism. Some people continue to say that. But some other people from the same religion will continue to support terrorism. So we have a problem. <laughs> I mean, these two different points cannot come from the same religion. One group says Islam is peace and another says kill everybody who doesn't believe in Islam. This is because there have been denominations within Islam. When people stopped the practice of spirituality in a certain religion, and they distanced themselves from the core, fundamental principles of their religion and they modified the divine text, then we started to have problems. Religion by itself is not evil. It is the evil people who find some, who found some pretext, modified the divine text and started their own conceived form of religion. Islam is a beautiful religion and, and definitely Islam does not teach terrorism. Prophet Muhammad said, killing one man is equal to killing the entire humanity. No offense to anybody, but I'm just explaining. Islam is a beautiful religion. It teaches peace and it teaches divine love. And at the same time, Christianity is a beautiful religion. You have Lord Jesus Christ. This, the mightiest healer in the world who touched blind and they began to see. And people who died, he touched them and life is restored in their body. And then we have Moses, and then we have Lord Buddha, Krishna, Rama. These are all beautiful people and beautiful religions. But the people, the, the, the problem is, in every religion, there are many people who have not been designed by God to adopt those religions. They are the souls of hatred. But somehow or other, they entered these religions and they are promoting hatred. No religion is bad. No religion is bad at all. This is my finding. According to my spiritual finding, there is no religion. Obviously, all these religions were 
established by prophets and messengers who were sent by God. So no divine text can be wrong. Hinduism is a beautiful religion. Islam is a beautiful religion. But the problem is, people who are not destined by God to love, who are not destined by God to make a spiritual, a healthy choice of life, those who fell prey to the, to the doctrine of hatred, those who fell prey to the doctrine of temptations and evil, they can call themselves Hindus and Muslims, but fundamentally speaking, they're the preachers of hatred. Now that's one thing about religion. Now coming back to your question, how do we connect ourselves with God? We're living in this world where there is no trace of God. We go to temple, we, we do not see God sitting there. We go to a mosque, we do not see God sitting there either. We go to churches and synagogues, these are places of worship. Nobody has ever seen God sitting in a temple. And Jesus said, how can you find God in a house which you made with your hands? Find God in your heart. Make your heart the temple of God. The question is, when we do not have any trace of God, how do we get connected to God? Lord Rariyas Gorshahi said, with the practice of the inner enchantment of God's name, firstly, we need to synchronize God's name in the beating system of our when God's name is synchronized in the beating system of our heart, it starts to generate a divine light. And that divine light will enlighten the heart. And His Holiness said, God does not look at your faces, at your bodies, at your actions and deeds. God looks at your heart. And when the heart has become enlightened and shining, then one day it will come under the merciful sight of God. God sees his friends and all the universal teachers every day. But sometimes he wants to look at the common people, common folks. And he only looks at those people whose hearts are enlightened and shining. Like at night time, we look at the sky and whichever planet or whichever star is shining, we see it, yet we do not know their name. In a similar way, when the hearts are enlightened, God will start to love you. He will not ask you a question, are you a Muslim, are you a Hindu, are you a Christian? As long as your heart is enlightened, God will love you. And the way to enlighten the heart is to synchronize the mantra, the, the real name of God. I mean, it doesn't matter what specific name or what name you use to call upon God. You may call upon God saying Rama, Krishna, Hari, God, Eloha, Elohim, or whatever name that you use to call upon God according to your language. What is important is to synchronize that name in the beating system of the heart. Only then God's name will produce divine energy. And how does it feel when you're sleeping in your bed and your heart non-stop is, is proclaiming the name of God? You're sleeping in your bed and your heart is busy with God. That is the initial spiritual practice with the words of <coughs> You begin to produce divine energy. And then what will happen? When the heart will start to 
produce divine energy. That divine energy will mingle in the bloodstream. And the entire blood in our body will become synchronized with God's power, God's name. And this is where the soul begins to uh, enlighten, the soul begins to awaken. And within a matter of few days, you will see, having obtained initiation, within a matter of few days, you will see something is going on in your heart. You, you're not engaged in any physical activity, yet your heartbeats are rising. And that rise in your heartbeats will be due to the fact that God's name is now being synchronized in your heart. Initiation of the heart is available. I can initiate whoever is willing with any name, Rama, Krishna, God, Jesus, all these beautiful names. But they must enter the heart in order to produce results. And this is a spirituality. Anything said with this tongue is not spirituality. Because this is not our spirit. The spirit is our inside. It has to be done by the spirit. This is how you will begin to have um, the presence of God in you and around you. I hope I answered your question. Light of God, there are many different types of light that relate to God. The lowest level of light which we can produce initially is the light of God which we produce by the practice of the repetition of God's name when it is done inside the heart. Light is actually not light like this that comes from bulbs, tube lights. The divine light is energy, form of energy. God's name is like a is like a like a tablet which has energy in it. But these uh, God's name, like in all scriptures, whether the scripture is uh, from Christian religion or Hindu religion, any text that came from God has divine energy. Like Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, Bible, Torah, Talmud, Quran. The text of all these holy books have divine energy in them. But we do not know how to uncode how to uh, use these uh, divine scriptures and how to produce light. Lord Raria said, anything from these divine texts, when they enter the heart, the heart will convert those texts into divine energy. So the factory of light is the heart. When the Bible goes into the heart, it will convert it into divine energy. When Quran goes into the heart, the heart will convert it into divine energy. 
when Torah and Talmud and Bhagavad Gita and Vedas, when they enter the heart, the heart will turn them into divine energy. This is divine energy and we need divine energy to awaken, strengthen our souls and then love is a greater thing. In order to understand divine love, we should be in contact with God. Obviously, I cannot treat God like I treat my wife. I love my children, I love my father, I love my brother. But the love we have for God is a different type of love. We haven't seen God, but once we see God and know God, then we will know what kind of love is given to God. People talk about divine love, but only when you see God, then you will find out what is it that God likes and what is it that He doesn't like and what is it that He wants me to do for Him. Only then we will know what is divine love. But there are people who are in contact with God and there are stories they say, love is a very strong feeling of attraction. Love is a very, very strong feeling of attraction. When somebody sees God for the first time, I'm giving you a very inappropriate example here. But excuse me saying that. When we walk out, the malls and we see beautiful women and girls. Sometimes we see some really extraordinary beautiful women and we'll just start wow. It's beauty. We're attracted somehow or other. In a similar way, God is so charismatic. God is so beautiful. I, mean, I cannot give you an example how beautiful God is because there is nobody like God. So you get to know how beautiful God is only when you see God. But when you see God, God is so beautiful and full of charisma, spiritual charisma and spiritual glamour. I don't know what will people do when they see God for the first time. But when you see God, you want to just jump into God. You want to hug Him and you want to cuddle with Him. You want to lose yourself in the entity of God. And this attraction is not something from you. This happens to you when you are in presence of God. God is so charismatic. I mean, you're, you're terribly affected by the presence of God. And you just want to lose yourself in the presence of God. And this attraction this very powerful emotional attraction is love. When you have seen God, you're lost. You want to see Him all the time. When you see God, you want to get into Him. Like a tiny little baby. The babies want to cuddle the mother and they want to hide themselves somewhere under the arms of their mother. In a similar way, when you see God, you don't want to go anywhere else. You just want to get into God somehow or other. And that very feeling is the feeling of love. Wow. <clears throat> and as soon as this feeling occurs to your heart, happens to your heart, all the human, uh, all the human instinct you have are then superseded by this feeling of love. And once you have been through this overwhelming, this spiritual, ecstatic experience of seeing God, then you become an embodiment of God on earth. God's attributes overpower your uh, human uh, characteristics. And you become so loving, you become humble. You don't know hatred then. You do not discriminate 
people sit in your company and they feel, oh, it's like sitting with God. People will begin to see the attributes of God manifesting through your character. I really, the words fail me to explain further what is God's love, but I can just tell you it's terrible. <laughs> Experiences. A lot of people who are in this, this, this 
spiritual path there uh, goes with this kind of experience. It's a beautiful experience. It's a wonderful experience. And how did you feel afterwards? Disassociated from my life before. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's I was very interested because I didn't recognize anything about my life. Yeah. I was in my own home with my children, with the clothes that I used to wear, the furniture I used to sit in, and I didn't recognize any of it. It took me a long time to integrate whatever happened into functioning in 3D, if you so will. Yeah, that, 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 that's exactly what I was explaining uh, a moment ago. You have two different dimensions, inner dimension and outer dimension. This novice feeling, this newer feeling was the realization of the soul, which was alien to the, uh, the feeling of the body. When the, when the soul was, a, was going through the process of uh, realization, that realization is different from the realization of the body. Uh, and you, to yourself, you look like an alien to yourself. Right? Yeah, because this was the inner realization, which was alien to the outer realization. But when the entire system is synchronized spiritually, then both realizations will find a union and you will be in perfect spiritual harmony. after me three times and then your heart will be initiated that's all and thereafter whenever you're in need of help right then call upon my master Lord Radhyas Gaurashahi and he will come for all kind of spiritual help that's what exactly was he talking about his holiness said in order to find God call upon all the great spiritual masters and teachers but for any reason if they do not appear before you to help you then put Gohar to test and call upon him so he will definitely help you 
and, and this is this is wonderful. I'm sorry. This, and this is wonderful because there is no commitment. There is no commitment. You're you're not going into any religion or or any <coughs> any faith. But you have to choose the name of God you use to call upon God. What is it? D-I-O-S. Dios. Okay, then I'll have to do it individually. Dios. Okay. We'll put the speed If you look at the image of the master, and now repeat with the word of mouth, Dios three times after me. Dios, 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 Dios. That's it. <laughs> what do you need to do now? <coughs> the target is to send this name into the beating system of the heart. Okay. So, when you go to bed, put your palm on your heart and feel the beats and with every beat say the name Dios, Dios, Dios if your beats are faster you have to say it faster <laughs> Dios, Dios, Dios this is, a, this is a practice small trivial practice right? and you will see in few days, like two, three days, maybe in one day, you, you will not need to say it with your mouth. You'll see your heart is saying, Dios. Not from here, from here. And then, whenever you're free, check your pulse and with pulse, Dios. And then, in few days, you will see you don't have to say it anymore. It's coming out from your heart. And when it comes out from your heart, that is the initial stage. Now you're in spirituality. Now your heart is initiated. And now your heart has turned into a factory which is producing divine light non-stop. You want initiation? What name do you want? Higher than that. 
is the name of God. I'm going to myself to that. I don't know if you can help me with that. <laughs> I can do some special here. 